So when you see that, you got like 306 plays for 45... For 40. Actually, I want to say something about that. Yeah. So I still have the picture on my phone. I got 305th, but I see online it says I got 306th. Oh so I don't know what's going on there. Pendant mob, you've got Fake some answering Fake news, I got 305. Say that I won is much more important to me than the physical trophy. Yeah. But yeah, I don't think I have a trophy in Vegas. I mean, you need to change that. Hello, welcome back to Ace Holes. I'm one of your hosts, Nikki Limo. I'm your other host, Caitlin Komeski. And Caitlin, what type of guests do we have today? Today we have um, sort of a, a folklore legend. Uh, a lot of people don't believe he's real, uh, but we're here to dispel those rumors mm -hmm. and talk about the validity of him. He is the Win Daily uh, Goat, if you will. He's the uh, Win recently, Reaper. Yes, the Win Reaper. Some call him. What's a uh, uh, folklore? <laughs> what? what is that? Folklore, like, like a folklore, a, like you your don't legend, exist. like like Loch Ness monster People or have the Yeti, been speculating that you Bigfoot. might exist. Okay, but thank you. Yes. you know we we weren't sure until now. Yeah. I'm real. You know, you haunt our dreams. That's another. <laughs> no. And his name is Jeremy yeah. Becker. Yeah. We're like trying to be, to be so quiet. I, <laughs> like, I feel like they're playing a 25K like right there. Don't worry about it. We are here at the Poker Grove Studios. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I heard you sat through a lot of traffic. I did. A due lot of to traffic. the F1 racing buildup that they're doing in our city. Yeah, it's Nobody been going wants on that for here. months. <laughs> yeah. Are you excited about the F1 racing? Uh, I know nothing about it, so not really. Me neither. I just know that it causes me a headache every time I'm trying to come down to the strip. Yep, me so too. So that's my impression, and I don't know. Maybe it's cool to see a car drive fast for 90 minutes. Um, I'll probably never know because it's like $50,000 to watch it from the strip, but It'll hey. be an influx of Europeans to make all the service workers unhappy because they'll get stiffed on all their tips. Mm -hmm. It just seems like an all-around net negative. Yeah, but you made it. <laughs> And that's, and that's uh, awesome. You're known in the poker universe for just exploding on the scene, being like a daily champion of the win. What the heck happened? Like, where did you come from? Um, Came from New York, grew up there, um, went to college in Florida, stayed there after college to play poker, and uh, came out here in March. And now I can't win anymore. What? <laughs> I haven't won a tournament in a long time. That's Didn't you get 12, not true. like two days ago in one of these yeah. poker master events? I did. I went 13th and then 12th. So, so do you, like, when you cash but and you go pretty deep but you don't win, that's considered a loss? I believe there's, like, one winner of a tournament. Oh, so okay. I get very disappointed. If, if you don't win. Yeah. Very Ricky Bobby, if you ain't first or last exactly. kind of a thing. Yes. Okay, that's healthy. So you incubated in Florida before <laughs> you decided to come out and destroy the Vegas scene. Um, <laughs> and then you just went on a tear. Yeah, I got on a good streak out here at the win. Just you win a few $200 tournaments and, you know, Daniel on the ground, he starts texting you. Yeah. That's well, it. So what's what's that been like? So a lot of the podcasts that we saw you on capitalized on um, you right after you were winning all the things and blowing up our Twitter feeds. Um, and then there was speculation that Dan Negreanu might do a staking deal or something with you. Uh, he's actually in there right now. What have you guys been working together? Um. Yeah. So we have a deal for like my bigger buy-ins that I play. Okay. So the. The, mas the tournament masters are going on, the Poker Masters series is going yeah. on right now here at the Poker Ghost Studios. Um, those buy-ins are the kind of ones that you're working on? With yeah, them? big stuff like that. Um, he will take a big piece. Okay. Yeah. So you actually, you got 12th in a tournament here two, two days, three, four days ago? A few days ago, yeah. Uh -huh. And then before that, you were final table, like a fifth place win. Oh, fourth Venetian. That one still hurts. Yeah. Why does that? Oh my gosh, that hurts. Yeah. Yeah, that one still hurt. Hurts more than the twelfth year for sure. Was it a yeah, bad yeah. beat? Did Cashed you lose out. a flip? How? What? Where's the pain? You know that one. I came into the final table. Um, I believe I was chip leader or second, and I ended in fourth, which is fine. But the way that it happened was pretty painful. You How get, did it happen? Got four all ins. I don't like telling bad beats or nothing. But it's okay. Four all ins. I was ahead all four times and I went 0 and 4, and that's how they got me. Oh, that's so. devastating. So you only walked with a couple tens of thousands? No. First place was like 44, I believe, and I got 16 something. Okay. Not too bad, though. 
I mean, it's good, like, the money is, like, nice, but, I mean, I just look at the 44, you know? You also had somewhat of a deep run in the WSOP main event this year. Yeah, that was awesome. That's your biggest score so far? Yes. For 44,000? Yeah, I think it's, yeah, something like that. So when you see that, you got, like, 300, sixth place for 45. Actually, I want to say something about that. Yeah. So I still have the picture on my phone. I got 305th, but I see online it says I got 306th. So I don't know what's going on there. Pendant mob, you've got some answering to do. Fake news, I got 305. And that's just such a better number because your winning cards are three and five. Are three and five. I agree. So How? hearing you talk, it sounds like you don't even really care about the money, that it's more about the prestige and the trophies. Um, No, I mean, obviously, like, it's my job. I need to make money. But um, I would say I play tournaments for, like, the competition and trying to get first place, where if it was strictly about the money, I would play cash. Mm. Interesting. You started in cash too, but I wanted to say with that win when you got three hundred fifth place in the main event, w- would be the same amount of money I- as if you had won first place at that Venetian event. Yet, oh, now it she got does him. not You're right. feel like first to you. Like it's- the main event is like the tournament in poker, and I think yeah, I would prefer to get first place in that Venetian tournament for slightly less money than the three hundred fifth in the main event. Interesting. Sure. Uh, that was going to be my next question because yeah. I think that the main event is such a more prestigious event, yeah. but first place is such a more prestigious title. Yeah, to first have. place is like you won, like you yeah. did what you had to do to win, where 304 people did better than me in the main event. 304, not five. Yes. Um, so that brings me to the question then, um, does, it, does it matter the buy-in level in your head? Um, no, I'm pretty, uh, sick. I actually, I busted two bullets in the 10 K here the other day, went straight to Venetian, busted a couple in the 400 and then went from there to the win nightly busted there just in time to max late reg the resorts world nightly. (laughs) And I took it just as serious as this one. Truly. I love that. And I didn't cash that day in anything. (laughs) <laughs> really not anything. a good day <laughs> but i don't care about the buy-in level i just like playing i don't like yeah i just busted a 10k i'm not gonna take the 160 less seriously or like be a dick to anybody because it's like a smaller buy-in like i'm there to win just like i was for this one true grinder truly do you struggle with tilt at all or do you feel very comfortable as soon as you bust one event to go straight into the other you feel like you can really reset the clock and you don't need time away from the table to reset um, no, nah, I play way too much. I don't really get tilted. I've lost any way you can. And I guess while I'm walking back to the cashier, maybe I'm on tilt for like 30 seconds. But once I have my new ticket, I'm good to go. Nice. So you've been playing. Are these the biggest buy-ins that you've played? So before the pa- Poker Masters, I've played four 10Ks. I played the main three times and I played the five diamond once. And then this past week, I played six 10Ks. Do you do any sort of different mindset rituals to get your head in the right shape to play like, the most elite poker players in the industry? Um, No, I do the same routine. I wake up, I sit in my hot tub for a little bit, <laughs> get in the shower, eat, and I'm ready to go. Wow, hot tub uh, flex. I need to go in the hot tub every morning. Do you take vitamins? No vitamins. Okay. I just recently started taking gummies to sleep. That's it. Dude, what, what's your study schedule like? Steady? Study. Oh, study. Yeah. Do you study tournaments still um, or are you kind of just more into the volume? I mean, I'm super into the volume and playing, but I mean, I do watch like GG Super Millions. You know what that is? Yeah. So I watch those final tables and I'll watch like the Poker Go final tables and that's really it. I'm not on the solver or anything yet. I find that part fascinating. So you've really just climbed through your entire poker career with no solver work, just studying the way that other people play at final tables. Yeah, I see like, so the GG tables, you see their cards. So, and those are truly like the best players in the world. So I basically see what they're doing and like what spots and I try to incorporate that a little, but Mm -hmm. also I'm not playing those sorts of players at the win. Right. So you really got to... 
be way more exploitative, I'll say, in the tournaments that I play. Do you pick up on, you would say, like live reads? Live yeah, tells? I'm, I'm big on the live reads. Yeah. I feel like, um, like when I play these, the 10Ks, like Poker Masters, live reads are definitely way, there's way less you're going to get off these guys. Where when I'm playing at the win, and this dude's all in, like, I'll be able to figure to something out. Size him up and down, yeah. yeah. What are some of, like, the most common tells that you can pick up off of these more recreational players? Oof, I don't they really want to give that yeah, out here. Secret okay. sauce. Yeah, yeah. I don't really want to uh, put that out here. But, uh, so when, you, okay, yeah. we'll make you answer that question. Right, thank you. When, when you transitioned from being a cash player, because you said earlier that you, if it was about the money, you would just keep playing cash. Yeah. Um, I had heard that you went from playing a 1-1 game all the way up to playing a 10-20-40 game. Is that right? Um, Yeah, 10-25, but 10-20-40 once in a while. Yeah, there's a straddle or something like that. Yeah. Was that in Florida? No, that was in uh, New York. Okay. Um, so you were grinding the cash before you started playing tournaments. Yeah, I learned poker in college. I never heard of it. and uh, Never heard of poker? I mean, I've heard the name you? poker, 27. 27. Okay, so you kind of missed the moneymaker. Yeah, I know boom. nothing about yeah, okay. that. So um, I just like to gamble. Like, me and my friends were really bad in high school. Just, we would, like, you name it, we'll bet on it. It didn't matter. And uh, I went to school in Florida, University of Tampa. All right, represent. Yep. <laughs> um, so at the casino, you have to be 18 to play poker, but 21 to gamble. Okay. So my only way I could gamble was poker. So they had a 1-1 one, one, no limit, $100 max. And I lost every single day for, I don't know, a couple months. Seen the same guys who I thought were balling sitting there with like their $200 stacks. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that summer I like started watching high stakes poker and whatnot on YouTube. Uh huh. And just getting into it and eventually just like climbed up the small stakes. So this is the part, I guess, the way that you learn is almost like self-taught playing by ear looking at like different spots and what do you take like notes in a in an iphone or like do you take notes on board texture and make adjustments or how does that work no, without no. touching a solver i really just learn by like trial and error playing i talk about hands with uh i moved out here with jake farrow i don't know if you guys okay know yeah, yeah Kate played a lot with him in texas oh yeah mm -hmm. so he's like my best friend in poker so we talk about poker we play pretty similar i think and um, yeah, that's really how I learn. Honestly, I just try stuff out and realize if it works or if it doesn't work. Is there something that you changed in your game um, when you just started going on a heater or do you think that you just caught the right side of variance at that time? Um, I think it was probably a mix. I definitely changed some stuff where I began cashing less but when I was cashing, I was going much deeper. Okay. So I was taking like bigger risk pre bubble. Okay. In order to like have a lot of chips on the bubble. And were you finding that you were um, continuously like big stack on the bubble when you started yeah, implementing that? For sure. I think yeah. that was super important during my run at the win, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you kind of implement uh, similar strategies now or ha now that you've played a more more variety of stakes have you tried other uh, other things that you're working on um no i definitely still try to have a lot of chips on the bubble but i'll tell you um the hot streak really i don't want to say it fucked me. can i curse in here yeah yeah i don't want to say it fucked me but um i mean these people just look at me now and don't fold so right. it's kind of mm -hmm. tough i gotta have better hands more often now in those tournaments specifically yeah i was gonna ask you about that too i'm glad that you just keep segueing naturally into my <laughs> next question is that yeah. now that you're kind of known like i've when you first got here you know you no one really knows who you are you know you're just another guy playing at the dailies yep. um but then you kind of got notorious and um known do you feel like people pick on you more or to target you more or um changed their game because of you um the targeting for sure i'd say at the lower buy-ins i mean I've probably busted to, like, when I would win a tournament, I'd hold up 5-3. Yeah. I would say 5-3 has probably busted me 15 times. <laughs> like, these, they're just coming for me. <laughs> like, 
truly and they bust me they start clapping like oh wow i'd Ooh, say it's a whole charade i definitely got some like um love and recognition but also people saying like ah fuck that kid that could be me like let me bust them right like it should have been me yeah a lot <laughs> yeah. of that definitely no i um the other day you posted on your twitter uh all the bust out tickets yeah. that at the venetian and when you post that, I forget who I was talking to. Another poker player. I was in the same room, and I was like, "Oh, look, he's posting for the transparency." Blah blah. blah. It's not just. I like that. That the, there's variety. Yeah, I like in to the keep post. it very real. Yeah, I love that. Um, and the person I was talking to was like, "Oh yeah, I was in a room with him, and when he busted, all the regs were like celebrating. Like he has like a fanboy group <laughs> that like they just like fan over. Like oh, you want know that? Oh, there, there he is. There he, he's coming. Yeah, they're, they're oh, they're happy he to see again. me bust. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Which is wild to me it was yeah. like i think that we feel targeted being in a kind of a public eye and stuff We're just and, so and women yeah. oh yeah, yeah that, that for sure effervescent beauty but i don't think people <laughs> clap when i no, I, I don't know that. i don't know about <laughs> clapping i don't know if people were clapping but i definitely see some like yes like like people are happy to see almost me like get you out. have a bounty but there is no bounty exactly, for them it's just yep. the, them bragging rights literally i see the guy that busts me like texting really fast in his group chat or something oh, like God. got him like <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these people are sick. <laughs> <laughs> Does that kind of give you like a little bit of like a? You, they say you're not somebody until you have haters. Uh, yeah. Well, then I guess I'm now somebody. You're somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get that type of hate online from your posting or in the comments of your winners' photos, um, or is it mostly? I mean, it's mostly yeah. good stuff for sure. But obviously, there are some like trolls online, and but it really doesn't bother me. Like, I get good laughs sometimes. My friends will set like DM me the tweet that somebody put that was like mean or whatever and I don't, I'm not bothered like it makes me laugh usually do you see um, tournament poker as being like it for you like is this it or do you have do you want this to be a stepping stone to something else or are you just kind of like going with whatever happens like if I won 20 million dollars tomorrow I would just play bigger tournaments yeah like I, yeah. I really just love playing tournament poker um, I don't see myself doing anything else for a while at least yeah i just feel like running deep in a tournament is so intoxicating in a way that cash play you never really get even if you're like winning this huge spot like that just like how it builds like mm -hmm. the nature of a tournament you get fewer and fewer people the pressure it's almost like creating a diamond in a way that cash doesn't it doesn't have can't compare mm -hmm. yeah for sure um i mean there's nothing like being deep in a tournament you see like two tables left or whatever and like you might win and be the one person that wins out of the hundreds of people in it for sure so all of this so far has been two card hold'em poker no limit hold'em yeah um yeah i think there's a couple PLO. of i'll play like a half and half like a mixed half plo half hold'em but okay i don't think i've played a uh full plo tournament so i was gonna ask if you like have any plans to start Playing more mixed games, you know, when you think about bracelets and, and wins and uh, the size of the field and some of these events, it seems like, you know, to be number one, like Phil, like a Phil Halmuth, um, it, you might want to incorporate more mixed game strategy in there. Do you think about that at all? Or are you just like whatever tournaments in front of you, you're, that's what you got your eyes um, on? I always say like, oh, the mixed game. I've played like a horse tournament before and I thought it was like a good change of pace and cool. But um I don't know. I'm super into the no limit hold'em. I don't. Uh, maybe like during the World Series, I would play a couple. But if there's a no limit tournament, I'm probably gonna go with that. Okay. Giving lucky charms. No, I'm not very superstitious. No card protectors. No lucky socks. Not even a bit. You won't ever wear the same outfit to day two that no, you ran well actually, in day one. Actually, you know one. what I did this past it's always week. Always something. Um, you take it up. I was given sunglasses. And was told they were lucky. So, and usually I see someone at the table wearing sunglasses. I'm like, fish. Like, <laughs> and this past week I was wearing sunglasses like four or five days straight. And you know what? They were all right. I were was making lucky? some deep runs. <laughs> what color was, are they? Uh, I'm not sure. Gold? Were they reflective? Everybody they were very reflective. reflective and people were making jokes. They could see my cards. I said, okay, then. Then you should, should be, I'll easy be easy for you. Yeah, yeah. I'll be easy. So, um, yeah, I tried those out for like a week. Yeah, so, and it seemed to work. I guess I kept wearing them the next day because I was going deep. So Hell yeah. All yeah. right, lucky sunglasses. So, I guess. Yeah. Everyone's got their thing. Um, when Now you say that you can't win a tournament, even though, I mean, 
yeah, you can't win is like, you know, fourth place as opposed yeah. to first place. Yeah, um, he didn't say can't profit. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 fourth place is super good. Like, it's very tough to get there. But I like a big pet peeve of mine is if somebody chops and they say that they won, like you didn't win, you chopped. Congrats on your chop, but yeah. you didn't win, yeah. you know? So, like, so you're a very no chop player. Yeah. Very Play no for chop. The and there's one winner in a tournament. I love that. Is there any yes. situation in which you would chop if you were like heads up against Jake, for instance? Would you chop oh, with your I don't your, care like, how much friend? money we're playing for. Definitely not in that case. <laughs> You're like, especially not with Jake. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I say if it was like life changing money, maybe like I say right now I wouldn't. But who knows in the moment if like it was something outrageous, like I'm sure I would listen. But um, I know two World Series ago, I money financially i probably had maybe like i don't know sixty thousand to my name and we were four-handed at venetian and an 1100 first was a hundred and eight thousand and i got offered over eighty thousand and i didn't even think about it yeah like, no thank you and i snap got fourth for thirty six thousand and i don't regret it but um, if I wasn't even considering a deal then, I don't see how I would yeah. consider anything now. So that would have been more than double. You would, it, it would I literally more than would have roll. like, yeah, triple. Like, no. yeah. Both my largest caches, I was uh, heads up for 100K and both of my opponents offered to give me more than second place money and they had the chip lead for, to like chop and I like snap said no both times. I was like, I think I'm a better player than you. You have to beat me. Yeah. <laughs> and they both did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, it's not even me saying, like, um, I'm better than you. I think I'm going to win. It's just a um, an experience thing. Like, I think the experience is invaluable. Um, do you do anything to practice heads-up spots? Because those are kind of hard to get volume in unless you're, like, specifically playing heads-up or studying heads-up. No, nah, I just learn by playing. Wow. I've played a lot of heads-up now. Yeah. Live. Well, from not chopping. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I definitely have – a lot of heads up probably more heads up experience live than most people i would say yeah definitely you do you ever play online or you, you're just no. you love live honestly part of me coming out to vegas i said i was going to get into online mm -hmm. and uh because wsop is regulated and stuff and i mean i'm super lazy i haven't even got a computer <laughs> i don't i say i'll do it but who knows like i've always just played live never played any online at all there's a beauty to that i i really I kind of like enjoy that. Kind of hope you never have a computer and play because yeah. there's like I I love live poker and I think that's no offense to online players, but that's like the real the true poker like where you're yeah. staring people in the eyeballs. You I know agree. you're yeah. you're feeling their feelings and stuff. As soon as you play online, you start to get impatient. You're so used to like just like having an instant hand. It's almost like when you have a dealer in the box that's hand riffling, you you can't even oh, yeah. You're like ah, oh, give me the hand. I need the next one, yeah. and you you lose the pace of it. Yeah, and it gets very statistics oriented, like where you're not even, I mean, they have like 15 tables going at one time. There's I was just, literally watching my friend the other day, um, 14 tables going at once, and like they're just clicking, and it's like, how do you know? Like, what if this person is super like aggro? Like, you can't be paying attention to all the tables. Yeah. Like, the way that I the play, little it, tiny tilt. it's very player dependent, and I don't know, online these people have 15 tables going. How do you know what people are doing? Like... You're Unless just, you have a HUD. Yeah, you're just like a robot. Then, yeah. gets very robotic. And I, I can yeah. see that being tough to like, you're not getting practice. You're also not getting practice picking up live tells um, when you do go play live. Yeah. So uh, I, I like that. I really, and I kind of enjoy that you're not um, super solver dependent because sometimes. Yeah, no, I honestly need to start looking at them. But as of now. But if you've gotten this far without even touching one, like, yeah, I don't, I'm kind of scared of <laughs> you with well, the solver. in a way, when you, like, get involved with poker theory, you kind of have to, like, tear down the whole house and start with a brand new foundation because the way that you approach the game changes so much. Sometimes I even, like, have a little bit of buyer's remorse with deciding to tear down uh, a system that was working really well for me and to try to, like, learn how to play from a completely different lens. It's, it's, it's a big choice to make. Yeah. I mean, I will say, though, that I know... Like, I've never looked at a solver myself, but, like, I know what it would say in certain spots, whether it's from talking with people that have looked at it or seeing online. Like, I know some things about it. Yeah. 
Yeah, like running over spots with people that maybe do use solvers. Yeah, knowing like... Like you can kind of recognize a flop texture that you're like, okay, these theory boys are going to be c-betting 100% of the time. This is King Low Low, or for yeah, instance. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. What's next for Jeremy Becker? Just grinding what a lot of... Mean? Yeah. <laughs> if there's a tournament in Vegas, I'm probably playing it after this podcast. Um, Venetian has the last day. It's actually I hit the same tournament I just got fourth, and today's the last flight. Okay. For, so I'll try to redeem myself on that one. Yeah, I mean, please, because if you uh, if you get anything less than first, that's so disappointing. True, like, I mean, you're kind of taking it the wrong way. Obviously, <laughs> it's good just to be in the money in a tournament is super tough. But you know, once you're deep, you want to win. Do you win like a coin at this Venetian tournament, or like they have big the lion coins. trophy? A lion the trophy. Lion okay. And I do not have one. Do you? Yeah. Uh, what trophies do you have right now? I think I have a couple of hard rock trophies. Oh, those are cool. The, the guitar pick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know what? I don't think I have an actual physical trophy in Vegas. Okay. I'm trying to think. I got like coins. You don't get but the the win building one for the dailies? not for the dailies. No, you, oh. it, that's only when it's part of a series. New goal. Yeah, hey. I don't think I'm not a trophy person, but to say that I won is much more important to me than the physical trophy. Yeah. But yeah, I think I just have some. I don't think I have a trophy in Vegas. I mean, you need to change that. I hope so. Hopefully a lion know. trophy. I may, I may, uh, I'm starting to think I may never win a tournament again. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you fall on the spectrum of arriving on time, late regging? Or do you prefer to buy oh, that's in a good for question. like deep? A good question. Or would you rather like you feel super comfortable at 20, 25 bigs and you'd rather save your time? Okay. So for if they're like for... The poker masters, if you reg level one, you get reduced rake. Yes. So I was here level one for those. So and that's Venetian a little bit too, different. I think, I think, right? Venetian does some that. tournaments some like discounts. that. But usually, I mean, I've never been there early enough for those. I think they give you like $40 off, which is cool, like $40. But I just haven't. Uh, it's some tournaments. It's certain tournaments. Yeah. Um, If they let me buy in, I'll buy in. So I try to show up the latest like an hour level an hour left of reg Mm -hmm. to try to like be able to spin it and if it doesn't work out i'll rebuy but um so that's around like 25 30 bigs yeah something like Mm -hmm. that but i mean if they let me buy in with eight bigs like i'll do it really oh yeah it's probably not too smart but (laughs) venetian some tournaments they let you and i've done it have you kept track of any of this like oh i tend to run deeper when i buy in no i probably should but i do know that when I'm shorter in general, like let's say 15 bigs or so okay. throughout the tournament, I definitely tend to go deeper. I think I play that stack pretty good. Yeah. Where when I have like 80 bigs, like I could fuck that up easy. I agree yep. 100%. Yeah. You get yourself in trouble, start blasting, taking yeah. one too it's many just lines. just like, oh, they're not going to call and they're Bam. calling. <laughs> where when I have like 15, like I'm not going to mess it up. Like I know what to do. Yeah. You yeah. Have a, a, yeah, because a lot of people I feel like think they have no chips left at 15 bigs or anything under 20. They're just like, they start to freak out, but yeah. self-destruct. Yeah. That's a huge difference between like a 400 at Venetian and like something here at Aria. I mean, Venetian, let's say they give you 40K to start. Someone gets down to 25. They're looking to get it in. Mm. It could be 60 bigs left. They're getting it in. <laughs> they're just, they just see the deficit of yeah. what they started with and not. Where uh, here the other day, you get 125K to start. Jeremy Osmus was down to like 18 instantly. And I mean, he's sitting there grinding for, I'm pretty sure he went deeper than me. He's like, they don't care. It's about big blinds. They know yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Where the lower stakes, they're just going to punt it off because they're below starting and they're going to try to rebuy and just boost up the prize pool and different mindsets for sure. Yeah, I'd say. Um, so how long ago did you move to Vegas? Um, I think I moved the last week of February. Of this year? Yeah. And do you like this the poker scene here so far? Are you liking it more than uh, New York and Florida? Yeah, for sure. Um, I'd say cash probably isn't as good here. Yeah. If I Like I went to, I was at the Lodge for a month. Okay. A year and a half ago maybe. Got and an I mean, Austin reg here. Yep. <laughs> if That's I, my home club. If I wanted to just play cash, I would be living in Texas for sure. Thousand percent. Okay. But for me, I like the tournaments. I don't see how a tournament poker player can 
live anywhere else right now. Nice. Because there's just something to play every day. Yeah, and they're they're bringing back, I feel like they're heating up the tournament scene here even more. Like they're bringing back the NAPT. Resorts World is having something. Yeah, yeah. that'll be pretty huge. And it's, it's butted up right next to the WPT uh, in December. Um, you haven't so far not lived here through any of that. Are, are you excited about one event or another or does it all kind of blend together for you? Um, honestly, I don't plan anything. So I wake up, I look at Poker Atlas and see what tournaments there are and I decide what I'm going to play. So yeah, if there's a big tournament coming, I'm definitely excited, but I'm all, I'm truly, I also get excited to go play a 200 at win. Okay. Like I just love playing. So a lot of profits come from table edge, like finding, uh, you know, whatever the softest game is or, um, game selection really. Um, when you look at Atlas in the morning, do you look more for that, the softer player pool, or do you look more at like the bigger prize pool? Um, I would definitely say a mix of the prize pool and structure. Okay. What's your favorite structure? Um, I think these Venetian tournaments are great, honestly. The 40 minute ones? The 40 minutes, 40,000. They're not skipping levels. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're super good. I like that. Do you play all of their type? Do they have like Survivor and they have uh, well, bounty events? I prefer not to play bounties personally. I just would rather the money in the prize pool. Um, but I definitely wouldn't play Survivors because I told you, I think there's one winner in a tournament. Yeah. In Survivor, they're forcing you to chop. So yeah. I, would, I would never sign <laughs> I didn't up even for think that. About that. <laughs> I would literally never play that. But like when I, yeah, when I played Survivor, I didn't think of it as a chop because it's, yeah, you just all kind of like chopping. you got there. Yeah, <laughs> You're in like one li lifeboat together. Yeah, so I do not like those for sure. <laughs> okay, okay, I get it. That makes sense. So I say you have like over a million in caches now on your Hennon mob. How much of that was from this year? I feel like you went on a huge heater, but. You know, that's a good question. I would guess between three and four hundred thousand. I would think. Really? So like almost half. Yeah, I guess. In just the short like amount that. of time. That's that a good you've question. Been... I'm gonna check after this now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really do hope that the the things heat back up for you. You've been Thank very you. inspirational to watch. I think just because of that you treat the um you know the lower buy-ins just as serious as the higher stakes buy-ins and a lot of poker players like everyone got into the game with the lower stakes and you kind of forget how passionate that you came in the game with and after grinding for so long and so seeing you just like crush it over and over again has been inspiring do you always actually win with three five or you pick those cards um yeah i pick them yeah. it's my favorite <laughs> hand i don't think i've won one of those tournaments with five three as the final hand what and why five three um so it's um we used to play seven deuce in New York in my game, and, um, and I started. I won like a really big pot with five three, and I started keep playing it. So the game got changed to three five. Okay. And um, yeah, Kevin Durant was my favorite basketball player, number thirty five. Like I don't know, it just became a thing. Okay. So people started like winning with it and showing it to me, like, oh look at this. So yeah, yeah. that's your hand. Yeah, that's my favorite that's hand. That's your baby. That's your ten deuce. Yeah, exactly. Name. But yeah. it's never suited if you see. It's uh, always two different Off suits. Suit? Yes. Oh, okay. Not that it really matters. It but does. When I show it, like if I were to win, it's always double suited. What if you suited. won with a suited one? Would you change it for the picture? Yeah. Always <laughs> off suit, for sure. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Consistency. Yep. Anything else, Caitlin? No, I think, but we do have a game prepared for you. Yes, we okay. do. Let's do it. Uh, we are going to play a game we like to call Unserious oh. Questions. Questions. Are you ready? Uh, yeah. If you don't win this, uh, I just don't even know what to say. It's I'm kinda, starting not to like my chances. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some of these are would you rather. Some of these are trivia questions with an empirical right and wrong answer. Um, some of these are your opinion. And uh, what really matters is just that we want the first thing off the top of your head. That makes it the most correct as if it's quick. Okay. And there are so like right rapid. or wrong answers, but there are. Okay. I will judge you yeah. on right. them. So first thing off the top of my head, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right, Fast. Ready. All right, here we go. Put an unspecified amount of time on the clock, please. Oh yeah, there's a timer. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, what is the biological process used by cellular organisms to convert light energy into chemical energy? Yeah, this game's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> next. Yeah, photosynthesis. All right, next question. What is the best flower? 
Rose. Incorrect. Weed. <laughs> Would you rather get eaten by a hungry bear or a shark that was just bored? Shark. <laughs> Name five movies starring Keanu Reeves. Oof. The Replacements. Speed. Is that him? Yeah. Yep. It's the best one. I'm not going to get five. Oh, my God. Um, John Wick. Yeah. John Wick 1, John Wick 2, John Wick 3. Wow. All right. Got there. Nailed I know it. he's also in three Matrix movies. Yeah, there's a Matrix kind of a gimme. That was pretty good with the franchise. Okay. Matter All right. What is Subway's most ordered sandwich? Um, The meatball one. Incorrect. All-American <laughs> Club. I would have guessed this meatball. Who's the hottest Spice Girl? I don't know one Spice Girl. Was it before your time? Um, I'm 27. Oh my know. god, <laughs> Caitlin. That question I, was to own us, apparently. I, I couldn't name one Spice You got girl. value owned. I'm All right, sorry. fine. Uh, you'll love this question then. Who's the ugliest Backstreet Boy? The only one that I know, I think, is is, is Lance a Backstreet Boy? He's an NSYNC member. We'll count it. I don't know. Yeah, we'll count it. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. <laughs> Would you rather win one daily a week for 10 years or for the same amount of money win the main event once, but no other tournaments? You don't get to play tournaments after. Ever? If I win the main? Yeah. Daily. Yeah, you could either. Oh, Dailies. nice. I love question. That. Okay, how did they build the Pyramids of Giza? If it's not sports or poker, I don't know the answer. You, but you have to know this answer. Yeah. How did they build the pyramid? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How yeah. did they build them? They moved limestone. The, there's, hundreds you of can't miles. Even slip a piece of paper through those bricks. How did they do that? I'm probably the worst contestant you've had in this game. I don't know. <laughs> Incorrect. Aliens. Yes. All right. List and li yeah. list these geological periods in order: Jurassic, Cretaceous, Triassic. The order that you said. Incorrect. Correct. Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous. <laughs> Who wins in a fight? A T-Rex, a Megalodon, or Chuck Norris? Chuck Norris. Absolutely. Correct. All right. What causes depression? A lot of fourth places in tournaments. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> All right. These have been unserious, unserious questions. questions. You got I don't second think I place did well. in that. So yeah. I'm so like sorry. Yeah, you got is, second place. That's you terrible. Know, kind of terrible for you. Yeah. And we're going to make you chop with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you chop yeah, second place chop. with yeah. three other people. Great. So Great. Yeah. thanks for playing. Right. Um, and you're I never headed... want to play that again. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to study the solver a little bit more. I do. Yeah. It's really solved. Solver based wasn't very questions, fair, so that wasn't right. fair of us. Looked at a solver yet? Unserious questions. Um, <laughs> you're headed off to the Ven Venetian today. I will be at the Venetian for sure. I really hope that you win a lion trophy, Thank but you. also I kind of don't want you to win one, just so that's like your white buffalo, your uh, your Moby white Dick, whale. your yeah, yeah, that you're. You just always, you never get the Vegas trophy, but you're always right there. I feel like I have no shot now today. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I was trying to reverse jinx you for what it's, it's worth. Right. Well, I hope the it poker works. gods know that. All right, let's hope. Just wear the lucky sunglasses. Yeah, he's got his lucky sunglasses. You can't. He's unjinxable. I actually don't have them, but I'm gonna stop oh, home that's to get where them. you fucked yourself. No, no, yes, I'm there we go. Okay, okay yes, yes, yes. Required. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on Ace Holes. We enjoyed yeah. having you. Thank you for having today. me today. Um, I'm sorry that for your unfortunate loss and unserious questions, but you know, there's always that was next brutal. time. <laughs> that, that was not. Good. The was aliens definitely time. built the pyramids, and I need you to know that. I don't. You see, I'm so clueless. I don't even know if you're being serious or not. Unseriously serious. <laughs> Don't okay. ask her about the Beatles. Uh, Paul McCartney got replaced in 1966, and oh I have hard evidence for it. So, if you want to argue any day, you, you know, you hit I, me up. I but, can't name a Beatle either. Um, you can't name a Beatle. <laughs> no, I mean the one you said. I'm pretty sure I've heard of. Which one? You can't, he can't even Paul, name the one you. Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney, okay, McCartney. The McCartney. real one or the fake one? <laughs> oh my God. We'll okay. talk. Yeah, we'll talk. But you about have to that. win a lion trophy to really get the details <laughs> yeah. on this. I don't do really best, divulge information sure. to losers. So, um, okay. thank you for being here. Yeah. Anywhere they can find you follow you on twitter twitter and instagram same yeah. username uh jbex2417 jbex2417 yep. awesome all right well good luck on venetia today thank you thanks guys it. we'll see you next time bye, bye.